Welcome back to Guide to Pen Testing. On this episode, we're going to be covering cross site scripting, both reflected and stored. For this episode, we have four of our virtual machines powered up. We have our Windows Server 2012 domain controller, our, our PFSense router, our Ubuntu application server, and our Kali machine for doing the actual cross site scripting. The first thing we're going to need to do is set up our Ubuntu server with the two web applications I provided. So let's do that now. First, we need to download the files. The link for this will be down in the description. Next, we're going to just simply unzip this file. I said yes to overwrite the previous files from the SQL injection episode. Now all we have to do is run the install script. We need to do this as root, so I'm going to change to root now. And then we're just going to do bash install.sh. Then need to enter the password from our MySQL root user. With that completed, we need to complete one more step to get these web apps up and running. So we're going to browse to the phpMyAdmin page on the IP address of the Ubuntu server. And we're going to log in with the MySQL root user. You created this in one of the starting episodes. Now we should see a new database called Challenge Free. If we click on this and go to More and then Privileges, and then add a new user account, we need to name this one Challenge Free. We need to set it to localhost and set the password to password free. We can then hit go at the bottom to save these. Cross site scripting is an input sanitization issue. This means when a user enters text into the web application, it is reflected back at them or returned back to them exactly as they enter it. This means if they enter JavaScript code into your website, they will have JavaScript code sent straight back to them and it will execute. This is a particular problem because it could allow users to input malicious code and have it run in any other user's browser, especially with stored cross-site scripting. So we're gonna start off with the IP address of the Ubuntu server and it's in folder two. And this is an example of reflected cross-site scripting. So reflected means it isn't stored within a database. So that means only the person with the exact same link as me will see this cross-site scripting. That being said, it's still a massive issue because this could be forwarded or sent to a user and used as a really eff effective phishing technique. So in this form here, let's just type test. And it says file test not found. And you can see here in the URL, it's performing a get request. So in this URL, let's change this to say script alert one. And you can see it executes. So what does that actually mean? Cross-site scripting can be used to deface websites. It can be used to steal passwords. So imagine this was a login form with this exact issue. I could make a login form pop up, which would send the credentials to my server, even though it's running on your website. And anyone who I sent this link here to, if this was an internet facing website, would have that JavaScript code execute in their browser. This next page shows an example of stored cross-site scripting. Stored cross-site scripting is essentially the same issue, but instead of being reflected directly back, the JavaScript code is stored within a database, so everyone who visits this page will have the exact same code executed. So if I enter my name here, and a comment like the one we saw before of alert one. When we execute this, it comes up with one. But if we open this tab again, every subsequent visit is gonna have this exact same thing show up. So this means if we were to put some JavaScript in here, which read wrote parts of the site and you can use JavaScript to restyle parts of your website. We could effectively deface this website or we could steal any kind of information from it. Cross-site scripting is particularly useful when it's in authenticated areas of websites because it allows you to steal the 
session token or the session cookie of a user, which allows you then to impersonate them. 